many things in the stakeholder domain and basically we started with the idea of what stakeholder engagement is right compared to in stakeholder management and why we are saying that no in agile projects we are more concerned about engagement rather than management it is mostly because we are a small team a cohesive team is there who is responsible to produce the results and it is much effective to use human skills to deal with this cohesive unit right when you use human skills if you use human instinct it will give you much better results this is what agile manifesto tells us based on the collective wisdom and collective experience of thought leaders they have realized that when you use the human touch in your agile projects it will give you much more benefit right more success less less bugs better customer experience better value deliver, delivery okay better overall result better satisfaction everything would be improved so we we say that okay we should have human touch in stakeholder engagement in agile projects and let us have this in a very intuitive and simple way okay now we did, after that we discussed about communication we we talked about uh, the richness of communication richness richness means there are two factors one is interactivity whether you are able to interact or get the feedback or acknowledgement immediately or not instantly or not if yes then i would say okay yes the interactivity is better if no then i would say okay the interactivity is not good okay i i am waiting for some time i need to wait for some time to get the feedback from that uh, the information on that information right whether the the other participant has received understood it well or not right the second part we we said the second dimension of richness is density of information how much information you are getting through a particular uh, media for example if you are interacting through emails you can only reads the letters written over there the choice of letter may or may not be perfect the interpretation of the meaning may or may not be exactly same as it was intended so these are the limitations of language and limitations of human communication system so it is better that more dense the information is it is better for the other person to understand so when when we talk about density we are actually concerned about what we are concerned about written communication verbal communication non verbal communication make sure that most of the things are there and it is possible only when you are interacting face to face okay we say na eyes never lie so something like that okay so now we are moving ahead and we will talk about collaboration first why collaboration is important in an agile project think about it why collaboration is important okay but before why collaboration let us think about what is collaboration what is collaboration if we look at uh, sorry i'm audible yes yes if you look at uh, our one of the agile manifesto values mm -hmm. one is individual and interaction over process and tools right so we need more focus on individual the conversations the discussion that much more important rather than the traditional process flows and uh, processes and tools mm -hmm. so that uh, one reason and and the, the collaboration is because we have a 
time bound delivery sprint time bound delivery right so in order to understand the requirement we had to deliver within four weeks time the sprint mm-hmm. so we had to more interactive rather than the documentation right so if i can talk a minute i can explain a uh, 15 pages uh, document output in a two minutes what is required if we want to write it will take you no know, long time mm-hmm. so we can take addition and quick uh, able to help them so collaboration is the key for agile without collaboration definitely it won't go okay so let us first take a step back and think about what is collaboration do we have a shared understanding of this word collaboration yeah collaboration is uh, the shared vision common objective we have to work together i have a individual differentiation but however sometime as a common objective i have to work uh, together to move on maybe sometime i have a different opinion in the project okay let me reframe the question can you tell me the behavioral aspects or the behavioral traits of employees which will help you to to evaluate whether that employee is collaborating or not what an employee would do to make sure that he is he or she is collaborating will he come on time suppose punctuality is a, is a fun, is a is a function of collaboration or not acha you are asking the uh, characteristics of the characteristics of collaboration uh one is a punctuality and <coughs> commitment punctuality Something. is or not is punctuality in suppose information sharing yeah yeah suppose uh, daily stand up meeting 10 o'clock and person has to attend 10 o'clock because we respect other people time as well right so whenever i want i don't gain right there is a time schedule and we have to attend on time uh, ensure that information should be shared properly and distributed accordingly right so 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 this is one characteristic of of collaboration what uh, else I, knowledge sharing yeah yeah knowledge sharing uh, and helping each other when is Hel- a helping each other helping each other and uh, that uh, interpersonal skills really helpful actually in this collaboration okay if somebody as some people may not uh, uh, interact much in the people right uh, 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 different different people they are loud their work but an agile makes the mandatory you have to speak you have to communicate you have to listen right in a waterfall i don't care i am allocating a task to you contribute one, ideas right yeah this is what mandatory you, you you need to mandatorily speak means what you need to contribute ideas in a workshop yes yes you have to be because there is a task for you you have to speak it up no right option. what else what else makes a person collaborative more uh, uh, empathetic uh, when the team go for crisis is or when somebody need help for the juniors empathy okay uh, understand uh, everyone uh, shoes you know other person point of view as well so yes what happen if customer who point of view product owner who point of view because i am not only looking at my perspective i need to look at their perspective what they are suffering it right that would also help me to change my thought process is some thought uh, or otherwise i want to do this only i am just one task but by explaining everybody their challenge problem our maturity also will increase right what else and uh, yeah the common goal everybody working for the goal the commitment uh, direction uh, common vision you can say common goal we want to achieve it as a team rather than my individual credit if team fail uh, if individual fail team fail if team fail all individual fail 
So it's all team fail or pass. There nothing is immutable. Right. So this one word, one simple looking word, collaboration, is so much there hidden behind it, right? So this one word is, if if we say that agile projects is, agile projects are all about collaboration, it would not be an overstatement, right? Can you agree? that in different aspects of agile projects we need to collaborate and only by making sure that people understand the true spirit of collaboration and they are getting the right environment to collaborate would make a great impact on the overall results of a of the of the project some some more thing i would like to add ownership uh, authority and a, commitment right yeah the ownership really i would like to touch two points here hmm. when, uh, when we ask for team member i want so and so uh, particular delivery the team member always work for for candidate not for, for the project, not for the customer. Mm -hmm. What my manager forced me to do, I have to do it. Because of this, so always complain mode or uh, some kind of aggressive against the manager or in the team leader, whatever. Mm -hmm. but, but if you take the ownership, he will come anytime, but end of the day, he will own it and uh, he will put a lot of enthusiasm and he will drive his own. Mm -hmm. So the leader, all employees should uh, a leader should enable employees or you know a team to enable them to take their, their individual ownerships if they took right. the owner the scrum master product owner should be relaxed because all are taking their own individual ownership otherwise they had to push on what happened what happened yeah getting done getting done so um because of scrum master i'm working because of product owner i'm working because of manager i'm working no i'm working for the customer not yes. for yeah that kind of mindset has to change in the initially it takes some yes. time Yes. But once that is done for everybody mind in the ownership, naturally things will be changed different. Right. So I am I, I am doing for the collective good. I am not doing for any one particular person or any one particular chair. I am doing this for the collective good for the customer, right? And waterfall is uh, we don't know customer, we don't know sponsor, only manager is the only one person. So yes. credit or debit or whatever it is only manager. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. So, so based on this, now whatever we discuss in today's session after this, uh, this particular point would again and again come back to this, this slide and this definition of collaboration, right? So for example, let me just give you a, 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 a quick snapshot of what we are going to discuss in coming things is the first thing we are going to discuss is about a model which is called the red zone green zone model which will help you to understand who is collaborative and who is not who is expected to collaborate in the team and who is not who is not collaborating in the team right this is this model is uh, proposed by Lisa Edkin, and we will we will have a snapshot of that, and it covers the behavioral aspect of people. Based on how people are reacting in the in the team, you can know which zone he or she is. Nobody can always remain in one particular zone, the green zone for collaboration or the red zone for collaboration. No, it is not like that. Even if the if a person is completely high in energy and very optimistic, very 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 uh, very motivated, then also at certain times he or she may go to the red zone of collaboration when he has very something urgent to do. And it depends on how much time you spend on one particular zone. It it tells you an overall overall propensity to collaborate. So that is one thing. 
may not be asked directly in the exam but it is it is it will help you to understand and appreciate collaboration and how you can identify who is collaborating or not okay the first thing that we will discuss is that then we will talk about the agile workshops and we will see that agile workshop is all about collaboration it is about collaboration any kind of workshop is about collaboration and for, uh, uh, upendra has already taken an example think about daily stand up meeting okay in the daily stand up meeting punctuality is is very important aspect in in any other uh, workshop think about the planning workshop think about the story map workshop think about think about any collaboration game think about spike think about anything retrospective think about the reviews in all those things empathy is important understanding others point of view is important in all those thing contributing ideas is important sharing your knowledge is important right in all those things commitment is important have you ha, are you committing something and following that without commitment the entire purpose of these workshops would be defeated in all those things alignment to the shared goal is important why are we meeting at the first place are we meeting to argue with each other and and bring out our personal differences and kill others time or we are here to solve a problem we are here to contribute for the project see there is unfortunately organization don't have a tab on it they cannot measure collaboration this is the most unfortunate thing that is happening they are not measuring collaboration no, i would not say they cannot measure they are not measuring collaboration and that is why when they are not measuring collaboration they are feeling the pain because when five people are there they are simply saying hey are you a shopper or are you explorer or are you a vacationer or are you a prisoner and that's it and they happily just go go out of the meeting but what is there in the system which will ensure that hey you have to be explorer in every meeting you attend that is why you are paid for that is what is expected from you as a as a participant in this agile project so these things are 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 very powerful ideas which you need to understand and appreciate to become a better agile practitioner first yourself and again i i'm telling it again agile is something which may take generations to change which may take generations to actually become agile it's a idea it's a philosophy it's a mindset and you have already been working for and you have been seeing the world for the last 30 years at least and most of your team members are seeing the world for 30 years so can you expect the thing to change those 30 years of sedimentation can you change in just one event or just one session of agile thinking no in the past 30 years you had that person was free to 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 acquire the philosophies and ideas and principles and mindset now he has a lot more biases in his mind so agile is a mindset it will take time to to convert to change to 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 appreciate it but the appreciation is important and the entire organization will not appreciate it at the same time it is not a, a simultaneous assimilation in a meeting in a in a workshop like this in a training program like this 10 people are attending and each of those 10 person has to go through the entire cycle of unlearning and relearning and that cycle the cycle time may vary from one person to another person irrespective of the fact that everybody is attending the same thing because it has to come from within i can only facilitate or any any agile coach or any any scrum master can only facilitate it has to come from within this is one thing now with this idea i am 
we are, we will we will build on one more very powerful idea of facilitation which is a very strong and very important idea in agile projects that we have a person to facilitate everything and that person is called agile coach or scrum master whatever you want to say okay agile facilitator sometimes project lead sometimes so that person is there to facilitate the entire thing so keep this in mind and we will build upon these things in all the things which we will discuss okay so let's first see the quickly the lisa atkin model so this is this is a simple framework that tells you that hey, if if a person is is trusting or he is supporting others or he is engaging is in dialogues okay he is honest and open cooperative risk taking so all these things tells us that he is collaborative he is ready to he is more ready to collaborate on the other side if a person does not trust others he is playing the blame game more frequently try to be defensive most of the time sometimes become violent also he is low in energy okay for him the work is painful and he needs external motivation so all these points tells us that this person is on a red zone so this green zone red zone model you can observe this just mere observation can help you to see how a person is behaving and therefore how that person can be means uh, how the person is expected to be collaborative or not in the project okay so this is just a thumb rule kind of a thing now let's move ahead thank you mitesh so now let me share the screen i'll go back to the one okay so agile workshops uh, we were discussing so now agile workshop are different kind of meetings so it's just a meeting in which people decide people come with a agenda and they get the work done okay so that that agenda can be anything there is a wide range of agenda we already have a fair idea of how what can be the agenda prioritization can be agenda assessment can be agenda estimation can be sizing can be planning can be an agenda problem solving can be agenda retrospective can be agenda anything can be agenda right now they use brainstorming techniques so when we talk about brainstorming techniques what are they do actually okay brainstorming what do they do so think about brainstorming so when we say brainstorming it is about generating ideas right it is about generating more and more ideas so when we are generating ideas in a collaborative fashion there are three four things that we need to keep in mind number one is when the purpose is to generate idea focus on quantity of idea not on quality of ideas okay then second thing is that try to build on others idea share even impractical ideas don't think much about the idea while we are you are sharing this okay sometimes the silly things which is which is apparently silly can become very useful for the project okay then do not comment on feedbacks or ideas empathize with others do not criticize do not jump on the conclusions right so these three things these four things we need to be vigilant about in any of the workshop okay so workshop is about idea generating and then then identifying the next course of action so we need to be vigilant and adhere to these type of principles right there are different ways of doing this one is quiet thinking quiet writing sorry quiet writing is that in in the meeting 
first of all the the problem statement is shared with all the participants and then the facilitator asks the participant to wait for or to think for about 6 to 8 minutes so everybody gets a time to think when they are done when they have collected their thoughts now the facilitator can use two things to share the thoughts or share the ideas among others one can be round robin and the other can be free for all round robin is like person with a token can can talk and then once that person is done with his comments he or she can share it to the next person and that is how we will we will gather the ideas from each and every person okay now go go back to the collaboration thing which we discussed in collaboration we discussed that everybody should contribute to the workshops and this is what makes the contribution actually work even if you are not you are hesitant you are shy you are introvert then also with this kind of facilitation you can contribute your ideas easily right then free for all free for all can be used after coit writing it means that once the once everybody has has uh, collected their thoughts the facilitator can ask can keep the podium podium open and anybody who feels like talking can can come and talk okay, it is not about coming and talk it's literal meaning right okay so now this brainstorming techniques can be used in different kind of collaboration games as well now think about why do we need collaboration games at all these are games the 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 word itself suggests that it is it is games it is also a kind of workshops and it has a different purpose mostly the purpose is to get into a collaborative mode that is why the name the name is collaboration game and why do we need to get into a collaborative mode think about it see we are a human beings uh, our mind always uh, not to support projects sometimes we have our own personal issues right with the team member Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, <clears throat> high priority my personal agenda rather than the project. So the ultimate is to engage, engage, keep on engage, right? right. So right. when we are trying to do YouTube and the content, the way they try to uh, you know engage our human mind because people uh, don't have a patient, right? To at least less than five minutes uh, YouTube, right? So people just one minute they'll just move on to another video. Yes. So uh, all this. Uh, uh, it companies their focus is to engage as much as possible on that at least a minute. So if engage it, automatically things will move on. Yes. To, to get connected. Get to keep connected. In. Great, great. So this is exactly a very beautiful explanation for collaboration game. The word itself tells is collaboration. It is for engagement. Right? Why do we need engagement? Because people have apprehensions, people have their own priorities people may may get disaligned to the project goal and be more conscious and more concerned about their personal objectives so in those situations collaboration game helps sometimes people if if the project is very long maybe ex extending to say 2 years 3 years in those cases people may lose the uh, the product vision or the the project vision itself so we can use collaboration games repeatedly after a certain interval of time to realign everybody towards the common objective, towards the shared vision. Right? Sometimes it is, it is to make sure that the approach is aligned. Sometimes to just engage and, and lower down the uh, the level of conflict among the teams sometimes to make them feel happy if somebody has some apprehension because see it is agile agile projects are about collective win and collective losses so when you feel that because of other people and it and typically developers feel this because of others ideas and others thinking they are going to suffer 
because they will get they will they are associated with a project which is going to fail this is a very prominent concern of people who are working in agile projects so nobody is listening to me and i am i am right i have seen it in my last 20 years of experience and you are not listening to me and this this project is going to fail so this concern how do you how do you relieve that person from this concern collaboration games so now let us talk about some collaboration games remember the future prune the product tree sailboats buy a feature bang for buck and there can be many more and it is up to your the sky is the limit the innovation or creativity of the person is the limit person means the agile coach or the scrum master this is the limit and there is no other limit so remember the future helps uh, helps the team to to define success imagine success it is like hey i am going to crack iit now think back when you are going to crack iit what are all the things you need to do and you work all those things this is what remember the future is think that your your project is successful and now think back trace back all the things which are which you you have done to get to that success uh, i have one question can i add a point here yeah yeah uh, for example uh, sailboat to remove the mental block okay yes so yes. collaboration all about team member and uh, somebody is uh, some team member is showing a different behavior than the regular behavior then we could able to see he is facing some problem mm -hmm. the person point of view but who will go on counsel is a scrum master or a team member and a project manager uh, you know if if a waterfall methodology if the team member is not doing and the developer the manager or team leader or tech leader will call for the cabin uh while you are doing blah 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 then trying to understand his pain point trying to help them wherever the possible organization point of view maybe relocation or giving work from home office mm -hmm. some kind of help whatever that they're, they're trying to uh, help them to come out to the normal mode mm -hmm. but in agile all are equal all are team member right and everybody facing sometimes mental work here and there but who right. can observe all these things and who can counsel or guide them to recover that issue and quickly come back to the on track and mission of the ob object of the project then can you share some thoughts on this right so so see this is uh, practically this is this is a real problem the the idea behind this or the uh, if you go to the agile values and principles and especially the servant leadership concept it tells us that the servant leader or the scrum master is the person who needs to ensure food and water for each and everybody what is food and water food and water is about psychological emotional and financial help or financial support what is food and water right food water and air is 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 necessary for survival if you don't eat food okay if you don't eat food you will die if you only eat food and don't eat water you will have big problem so food and water is a metaphor for emotional financial all kind of personal thing that you need to know or you need the support for who is responsible for this this scrum master so a scrum master is the person who need to know the pulse of the team in when when you are thinking about the mental block the first role of the scrum master is to understand the mental block of each person how he can do it he can do it by individual coaching and team coaching he can do it by collaborating or involving with the team team coaching and individual coaching these are the two things that he needs to do over and over again we will talk about this coaching thing in uh, module 7 last module it is about improving people okay anything you need to you, you want to add 
Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Scrum Master only could able to focus more on their behaviors, much more deeper compared to the team members. Right. Uh, Scrum Master should be a more matured and more collaborative compared to the team member. Yes. yes. A little, uh, some feet height are, you know, some high level of degree maturity required. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, then things will work out. If Scrum Master is not behaving properly, the whole team will disturb. So, Scrum Master yes. is a key yes. as a collaborator. He should, uh, his mental should be uh, stabilized before talking to somebody, right? So, right, right, so right. Then probably Scrum Master, a little bit experience required uh, when compared to the team members. Yes, so that is why we need the Scrum Master to be a people manage, people leader. He is a servant leader. The best word is a servant leader. He is a leader, first of all. So to be, to be a leader and to be able to coach somebody, he should have an aspirational, aspirational uh, figure also, right? The team should aspire to or, or team should feel uh, like good about him. His figure, his, his, his perception in the minds of other people should be of the positive side, right? All kind of good things he should be portraying through his actions and his behavior in the project and his pedigree and his background and his experience are all those things. Then only he or she would be able to, to, to coach individuals and teams. So I would, I would see that in a, in a, in a project, a scrum master should be relatively the senior most person in terms of experience and in terms of pedigree. So probably he should come from very good pedigree in not, not only restricted to say the, the IT industry or he, he, he must have done something. The thing is that in a broader perspective, he should have experience of dealing with people. If he has the experience of dealing with people, if he has done it in pre, for example, think about a very senior IT manage, manager, maybe somebody who has, who has been an architect for, for a long period of time. And now he wants to switch this task. Somebody who has been a business leader for, for a long time, maybe directly or indirectly related to the IT projects. And now he wants to switch to a different kind of agile coach role. Probably these kind, any, any kind of person who understand the mentality of a person who is willing to be neutral, to be receptive and facilitate others should be the person in the scrum master role. So this is what my understanding is. What do you feel? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. 85% people manager, 15% technical knowledge. Yes. The way they are working, which projects, so at least have a basic a conceptual idea. Uh, what are all about the architecture? What are all about the customer needs? That yes. probably can um, engage both. Uh, without technical background, again, they become a coordinator, right? So just whatever the team sell, just update yes. the Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, coordinator, the postman. <laughs> And, and to, to, for the team to, to be, so the best example is from, from cricket. Why a person who has been a player can become a coach and mostly he or she is the coach. Think about, think about Indian cricket team or any cricket team means probably, I think any other cricket team also. The coach has a background of cricketing itself. Right. Ravi Sastri can be a coach because he has seen it. Rahul Dravid can be a coach because he has seen it. Sachin Nandulkar can be a coach. Good or bad, it, it, it is a different issue. Some, yeah. some, some people can be very good. Some people may not be very good because it requires a different skill as well. Not only the knowledge of the game, knowledge of the business, but also the ability to coach, not everybody can coach, right? So it requires an entire different kind of a skill. So yeah. it's a mix of both, right? Uh, Srivant, I have one, you know, a practical example, like yeah. in daily stand up uh, when we, uh, I mean, when 
uh, people are uh, talking about their uh, today's uh, work then i mean if i ask uh, people is, is saying it will take two days okay and in technical terms if i think that it, it is hardly a two to three hours of job okay mm -hmm. but uh, in that case i'm not uh, you know interrupting them uh, but in uh, you know uh, in general talk or in you know discussion i you know in in the i mean in general language i say that uh, i mean this is how how you can say that this is a two days of job this is only mm -hmm. you know hardly one to two days or one to two hours mm -hmm. so in this case my technical skill and i did that work previously mm -hmm. so i know that that this this work can be done in uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, in this particular time mm -hmm. yeah, so. right so so when that is that is what we we are discussing so if you have the background people cannot bluff also people would 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 think twice before bluffing but the interesting point about it projects is that it is so vast and the technology is changing so fast that you can not say this for sure that i have done it and i have seen it it is like this only and it should not take more than this much because the technology has changed the approach has changed the people has changed the complexity is different so but yes it is definitely hel helpful uh but i would like to add a one point here so technical i think uh, limit if you go on uh, too much of a technical then um, naturally you'll get a bias right uh, also i'll give an example i think 10 15 years ago g uh, started an operation in hyderabad okay uh, they were doing the project called flood mapping my friend uh, uh, he has moved to the g that time is a global mnc that is we are working with small company mm -hmm. And naturally, G is trying to recruit the manager who come from flood mapping background. Mm -hmm. mm, you know, they are doing the project, but they could not be able to meet the customer targets in, in terms of the quality and on-time delivery. And after four or five years, they hired up an MBA graduate, very young chap. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those days, now is agile now. Those days, he's trying to implement agile, more of freedom and... Uh, you know, open to express. That time is more in a factory culture, right? Mm -hmm. But when I say you have to do only there is no backward. Just one word you have to go. Right. Whether you or not. Then I, we had a conversation 10 to 10 years ago in a, one of the Iranian coffee. Then I said, hey, handling is not necessary for a technical background. These guys does not anything technical. But the way you engage the team, the way given a competitive environment, and people able to do it, and it's all team collaboration. So what I'll give a simple example. Earlier, the manager had to allocate the work. Mm -hmm. Okay, this complex work package. So I need to give to Srinivas. This is small. I need to give to Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. So every the manager depend on that. But when he came on board, he understood the overall concept. He taken a whiteboard. These are the job packs that are available. Who can come and pick it up openly? And oh. people who interested, they, they pick it up their work package and they're enjoying themselves. Some mm -hmm. people are interested in some kind of uh, work package. Some people are interested in some work package. Some complex are available. Any volunteer will come and help it. I'll appreciate it. And people uh, started their own and take an additional responsibility. Jess, he was enjoying, like, you know, he'd never been sitting in the cabin. He was sitting with the team member, having, going to the coffee and talking to them. All just time pass, collaboration, interaction, right. nothing technical. But they could able to achieve the priority in advance. So those days are no agile, but I'm trying to share with this model. So manager more focus on the interactions. Now we right. call it an agile all the stuff, but uh, there is no one man army. People are, as you mentioned just now, all team member voluntarily, whatever they picked up the work order, mm -hmm. then naturally they become an owner. They have taken a, right, once I take the ownership naturally, I want to get the thing done, right? If somebody asks me to do that, then I'm working for the particular person or a manager. When I take the ownership, the mind, my perspective, my mindset, everything will be changed. I'll right. take help from the team member. Uh, I'll talk, talk to the people because I want to finish my own work because I took the ownership. If something problem happened, uh, if it is a traditional model, what happened? This work was allocated to me. They said, I have this problem, that problem. I always go complain mode. I don't want to complete it. Right. I don't one step ahead of won't connect my neighbor or my colleague. I'll always go say, I'm ready to do it, but this is a challenge. Then manager will go and talk to them and get somebody, you know, waste of energy, everybody. So this is what, I, I really like that approach. 
because those days we don't call it agile but i'm trying to show more empowerment to the team member right. and spend more uh, interpersonal skills and uh, engage them and motivate them that is the job is to, to get the high empowered team members yes. whether the manager go for one week leave 10 days doesn't matter things get the thing done in waterfall manager manager one week gone lean and entire thing will go mess up yes If, <laughs> yes so this was a change i'm just uh, something connected i want to share the team yes yes That's what happened right nice nice okay so so let's let's move on to understand how these games works okay because a fair idea would be would be helpful to visualize what is happening so remember the future i uh, so imagine that the entire team is sitting they are sitting in a room and there is a facilitator a scrum master is the facilitator and that person is is giving uh, giving a situation the situation is that hey imagine that you have imagine that your project is successful now think about it and write the success story in 20 minutes so they will gather their thought they will write the success story and they will write down the points on small sticky notes okay the points different kinds of points so what they achieved how they achieved who collaborated means all the good thing and the bad thing right so they talked about it since it is a successful so bad number of bad things would be less and number of good things would be more okay so first 20 minutes they will they will write down everything on sticky notes everybody is writing just only writing the situation is the context is set and everybody is writing personally then the next 20 minutes everybody will go with their sticky notes and work on a board so think about a large board everybody is standing near the board and they are they are just they are just sticking these sticky notes on different categories like this so suppose they 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 they, they decided that there are four categories like success factors core features additional resources and infrastructure or team resources so there are four categories or five categories or 10 categories they have identified and they have they will start pasting their sticky notes on those categories now what are they collaboratively doing they are collaboratively creating a success story map in order for the project to be successful everybody should be following this thing and then they can discuss that okay these this is the point is a is this a success factor is this a core feature is this a additional resource related things and they agree on this and we have this this chart ready now what is the end result of this chart the end result of this chart is the change in mentality of the people nothing else the purpose is to help them understand what success is and how they can achieve the success the purpose is this to help the stakeholders understand what is success and how they can achieve it that's it the entire this writing down and making this chart all this decoration is of no use okay so the end result is only this feeling that they are going to take away with them this is remember the future game the other game is prune the product tree suppose people are not not aligned to the overall understanding of the product overall and in prioritization meeting every time in every prioritization meeting they are they are fighting with each other without understanding the basics about the product in that case this the facilitator the scrum master may organize this particular game prune the product tree think about two customer representatives they are cross functional and both of them are rigid that they need their feature first but both of them are not understanding that none of the features can be made before a particular infrastructure related feature is done and that infrastructure related feature would take the next iteration the complete iteration to become ready so the team can not take their features their request 
until at least one iteration is finished. How, how will you make or bring everybody on a common understanding that yes, why it is not possible and what is possible? This is the game. In this game, all the stakeholders try to bring everybody as, as many as possible. They get gathered together and they start to brainstorm out features. And then they make a tree, they just tree structure, and they try, they start sticking those features on this tree. Okay. They start sticking the features on this tree. So eventually, after the after the meeting, the tree would be full of the sticky notes like this. Okay. So it is full of sticky notes. It is like this. It is not deep, it is a sticky note. Okay. Uh, we use as a, we use as a idea tree. Yeah. So so I I don't know. So it is it is not only prune the product tree. Idea tree can be the word. So it is creative thing. It is it is not rigid. Agile is not rigid. So this this can be the idea tree. This can be the product tree, whatever you want to say. Is, no, not an issue. The purpose is very clear. The purpose is that you cannot make anything which is here at the top before the branches are, are ready, before the roots are ready, before the trunk is ready. This particular feature cannot be prioritized. Right? So if someone is asking me, no, I want that. So he or she need to understand the dependency, right? So this product, this game helps to understand the dependency. Speedboat. When you are, when you are boarding or when you onboard a boat, think about it. Imagine this, this is very, very uh, figurative and very pertinent. When you board on board a boat, right? So the your safety depends on the other person's safety as well. Can this happen that the boat is now drowning and some people will will not drown? Can this happen? If unfortunately something happened to the boat, then the entire person will, will get in trouble, right? So that is why this kind of a metaphor is used, speedboat or sailboat. So it's a boat. Your project is a boat. Either you collectively win or you collectively lose. Now think about this, think about this particular boat and think about your tree. This is your tree. This is your product tree, right? And this is the river. Okay. This is the river. And your boat is here. You have started the boat and you are moving towards the product tree. You need to reach to the product tree, right? Your vision is clear and your boat has some people, right? This is your, the number of people are there in the boat, okay? And they are collectively steering the boat from one bank to the other bank one bank to the other bank, they are steering it. So what are the different things that you need to keep in mind? You need to keep in mind the direction. You need to keep in mind the external factor. So internal factor and external factor. You have the boat, you have anchors. Internal means what? You have anchors, right? Anchors are what? You have sail. Right. Sail and anchors. If you, if you open the sail, 
the boat will move fast. If you do not open the sail, and if you do not guide the sail in the right direction, in the right fashion, then the, the, the boat will not go in the intended direction of the product tree. Very figurative. Now, you need to manage those internal factors, anchors and sail, and the guide. And the external factor, the speed of the river. Flow of the river. Okay. Then rocks. Okay. Rocks are what? The hurdles. So these are the external factor and the internal factor. Both the things you need to manage and make sure that your speed boat or your sail boat reaches this particular product tree. This is what is sail boat all about. So when you talk about anchors, think about this what can be the anchors? Anchors are something which is pulling you, which is stopping you to perform to your best. This can be your apprehensions. This can be your fear. This can be your biases. And what are we asking you to do this? in this? We are asking you to tell us your biases. Tell us your fears. Tell us your apprehension. Tell us why do you feel that the boat is not stable. The boat might fall. We may, we may not reach to the other end. Why do you feel like that? Tell us about those things. What can be the sail? The energy, the enthusiasm, the optimism. Right? The strength of your people. The background of Success, all those things can be sail, right? Think about rocks, the regulatory compliance issues, okay? These things are to be understood. And when, when you play this game, you give them or give the all the stakeholders a opportunity to talk about not so good thing about the project. And when they, when they talk about not so good thing about the project, they feel relieved. Okay. So you place this prune the product tree on one side and you play and you use another board. And in that board, you, the way I, 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 I draw the water line, the similar fashion, you draw the water line and you help the team members to imagine something. Okay. Ask about anchors, tailwind, rocks, all those things you can ask. With this, the collaboration is over. Now let's switch gears.